A total of 14 states have passed near total bans on abortion since the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade last year. But South Carolina is not one of them. That is because a bipartisan group of five female state senators have banded together. They filibustered a House bill that would have banned abortion at conception. Their efforts came despite a Republican supermajority there in the state. The group of women has been dubbed the Sister Senators, and they include three Republicans, one Democrat, and one Independent. The fact is, I do not want anyone in this room making life and death decisions for me, my daughter, my granddaughter, and for that fact, anyone. I also do not want the person I choose as my medical professional to stop in the middle of a procedure and request the South Carolina Code of Laws to decide if he can proceed or if he may be committing a crime punishable by a fine or time in prison. And choice, I don't care what anybody say, does give you power. It gives a woman and a child power to live a very productive life. This is not your place. Let the people of South Carolina decide. You say you represent them, let them decide. And the two sister senators you just saw there join us now from Columbia, South Carolina, Democratic State Senator Margie Bright Matthews and Republican State Senator Katrina Sheely. Good morning to you both. We appreciate you being here. Senator Sheely, I guess I better start with you because you've described yourself as the mama hen of the sister senators. Uh, so tell me about this coalition that some people from the outside view is unlikely because you do sit on opposite sides of the political aisle, different views on the subject of abortion. Why was this so important to you? Well, for one thing, first, thank you for having us with you this morning. But for one thing, you know, I do believe that um, being pregnant and having a child is something that only the women in the state of South Carolina can really relate to. This is not something that all the, the men in the, that chamber, which there are way more men in the South Carolina legislature, we rank number 47th in women to uh, men to women in the legislature, but they can't compare to what the women are feeling across the state. That's not an issue that they're familiar with. But for them to make that decision for women is, is not, it's not even reality. But for the last six years, we have listened back and forth on abortion. And for the first four years, probably, we let them talk about it. And we've, we've listened to it over and over and over again. And we finally decided, you know, it's, it's our turn to speak up and say what we really feel. And we've decided that we're not going to let it stop with what they want to do. Because if it were left up to the House of Representatives in the state of South Carolina, we would have a no abortion after conception law with little to no exceptions. And, you know, that's not what the women or the, the majority of the people of South Carolina don't want that leg legislation. Mm -hmm. And it really should be up to a woman, her spouse, her partner, her family, and her doctor, not to 170 legislators in South Carolina. So Senator Matthews, I think just this partisanship on alone is kind of heartening given the way our politics go right now. So tell me how this coalition came together. Were you surprised by the outreach from a group of senators who see the issue differently than you do? No, I'm not surprised because this is not a political issue. It's not a partisan issue. This is a woman's right issue. It's an issue of us coming together to say, hey, shouldn't we let women and their significant other, the doctor, decide what should be done with their um, um, reproductive rights. Um, it's difficult as a woman, and it's usually only one of us in the room on most of the committee meetings. It, we banded together pr uh, primarily because of our um, realization that men had no idea what it's really like to go through um, a pregnancy, much less what it's like to go through a difficult pregnancy. And that one issue brought us together because we would sit in committee meetings and hear things like a woman ought to know that she's pregnant after six weeks or um, she, if she's been raped, she should have the child and love on the child without um, medical intervention. After hearing things like that over the years, 
that's how we banded together because mm. we were one in awe at the fact that men were just trying to control this issue and not listen to women. So we came together on that one note. Uh, hi, it's Jennifer Palmieri. It's great to meet you both. Uh, yeah, I think we remember from uh, after Roe fell and South Carolina first acted, some of the male legislators admitting later they had no idea the impact of the legislation that they were, uh, you know, that they were trying to enact. So for both of you, tell me, you know, I know that you've been attacked a lot, had a lot of, you know, nasty uh, uh, protests and, uh, you know, people trying, people giving you, ba uh, people giving you small spines to, uh, as if you needed that to uh, fortify you. But um, on the, on the, on the anti-abortion side, but tell me, like, what are the stories that you're hearing from women in the state that support what you're trying to do? I think for every uh, hundred positive comments, I'll get two negative comments. So I think it's overwhelming the way the women feel in South Carolina. And I, I think the, the men have gone brain dead on this. They just, they either don't read their email or they're just not listening. Now they do have a coalition of people that they will bring to the lobby of the state house. They will bring their children. We have had little children come up to us and say things like, you're a baby killer and, you know, latch on to you. And, you know, who would bring their child to the state house and have, they only latch on to female senators and call us baby killers. We have one um, regular protester that brings pictures of cut up babies and stands there and calls us baby killers and reads um, Bible scripture to us. They only do that to the female senators. Um, you know, we have that, that's usually every week, but you know, we've stood strong. The spine thing, that was probably the worst case of lobbying I've ever seen in my life because it only made us stand stronger together. And, you know, once you've, you've tackled a situation, I don't think, you know, if you want to lobby me and I think any of my other sister senders, the way to talk to us is to sit down and explain to us why you feel the way you do. But I don't even think they know why they feel the way they do anymore. I think they've just found this cause and they want to push it down our throat. And we are not going to change the way we feel. And we have several of, of the male Republican legislators that have stood with us, three, I mean, it's not a lot, but we have three that have stood with us. And I think they will continue to be in with us, at least I hope they will. And, um, you know, we're not going to give up on this. The House has taken our bill back that we had sent over there earlier this year, and they have added, you know, tons of amendments to it. And then the House Democrat women took the bill back to the House chambers yesterday with, I think, a thousand amendments. So this is not over. We didn't have a sunny die resolution, so we will be back probably week after next to take it up again, which is not some, not the way we want to spend our summer because we've been on this for four times in eight months. So this is not what we want. I don't think this is what the people of South Carolina want. We want to end this, but this is where we are. This is uh, uh, this is about taking rights away from women, and so it's uh, uh, it can be demoralizing that way. But do you find people when they get in touch with you about it, are they reacting because they're angry? Do they feel empowered? Do they want to fight back? What's the reaction? And this shouldn't just be about women in South Carolina, but men and women both that object to what is uh, what you know what the legislature is doing here. Well, um, primarily, um, I don't think this is about taking a woman's right. I think it's more of a control. It starts here. How, how can they control what a woman does as it relates to her body? Um, and the response has been from women and men um, uh, on both sides of the aisle. Um, invariably, they keep telling us to keep fighting because they feel that this should be either, some will say either we, it should be Roe versus Wade, um, codified or either we should put it to the voters of South Carolina. Um, a number of Republicans and um, Democratic senators have filed bills to put it um, 
as a referendum in South Carolina, and those um, have been ignored. So um, we don't intend to stop fighting. I uh, filibustered this issue for many hours my first year in the Senate, and every year since then, we've been at it. And we keep getting way to go from <coughs> all of South Carolina. <laughs> And because of the coalition you have formed there with the sister senators, abortion for the time being remains legal up to 22 weeks in the state of South Carolina. South Carolina State Senators Margie Bright Matthews and Katrina Sheely, thank you very much both for being with us this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you, Pleasure. Jan, for having thank us. Thank you.